Hey guys, Jocelyn here with Fantasia Elegance. I hope y'all are staying safe and healthy. The other day a very thoughtful individual reached out to let me know that she was going to be using my angel pendant tutorial uh, to create gifts for her local healthcare workers during this difficult time just to kind of show her support and a little bit of encouragement for them which I thought was just a lovely idea, so if you guys haven't checked out that tutorial, go ahead and do that. And I also thought that another great design for that purpose would be the caduceus symbol, the uh, medical symbol. I'm sure you guys have seen it before, which is something I've been kind of playing around with and wanting to make for a while with wire anyway. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make this wire-wrapped caduceus pendant. And you can make this as earrings, keychain, whatever you like. I will be making it in a pendant size. And just to make it easier for you guys, if you did want to make some of these to give out as gifts, I will for a limited time be offering the accompanying template for a free download. Now normally I do have these in my Etsy shop for a very small fee, um, but during the pandemic I want to make these available for free. So I'll leave a link for where you can download this in the description section below the video. Of course, you don't have to have this template to make this, it just makes it a little bit easier. But let's go ahead and get started, we'll take a quick look at the tools and materials you need. Um, as I said before, I'm going to be making a kind of pendant-sized symbol, so it's going to be just about one and a half inches tall. And for that size, I'm going to be using some 20 gauge wire. I'll be using sterling silver from RioGrande.com, which is where I get most of my wire. You can use any kind you like, as long as it's round, dead soft 20 gauge. And then I'm also going to use some 28 gauge fine silver, again, round dead soft. You'll also want some beads. I'll be using four millimeter, and they're gonna go right at the top of the staff here. As far as tools goes, you'll be needing your standard round nose pliers, chain nose pliers, and flush cutters. And I do have in the description section below a list of the exact tools and materials I'm using and where you can purchase them. And optional but helpful is to have a steel bench block and jeweler's hammer. You'll also need a ruler, and then also optional is something to file metal with, so a metal file or an emery board like this would be helpful. So to start out, I'm going to use my 20 gauge wire, and we're just going to measure off the length of this. For a pendant sized symbol, I'm going to cut 12 inches of this 20 gauge. And I do have listed on that template some different sizes and the according lengths of wire to use. But we're just making the medium one for now. And then we're going to start by bending this 12 inch piece of 20 gauge wire right in half. And we're going to put a very tight little crimp in the middle of it here. There we go, just like that. And then I'm going to straighten out these two tails. And I'm just going to open this up ever so slightly with my round nose pliers. There we go, so that we have something like that. We want kind of a very, very long, narrow V-shape. So your wires are running almost parallel to each other, but they are tapering out a little bit towards the tops, like that. So what we've done is formed the bottom part of the staff here, and we're going to start splaying these ends out for the tops of the wings. So if you've downloaded the template I have here, just cut out the middle portion, you can do that very easily by laying it on top of the template, matching it up, and just marking with your chain nose pliers where that first bend is going to happen. And you can kind of follow along on the template with the little outline. Um, if you aren't able to print out the template for some reason, I will show you the measurement. It's going to be right at one and an eighth inch there is where you want to make your first bend. So we'll just do the same thing on the other side. And after you've put that bend in, we're going to start curving these up in kind of a swooping motion there. So we've got a nice little arc going that way on both sides. And then we're going to put in another bend, and this will be for the top of the wings. And again, matching it up on my template, I can mark right where that's supposed to happen, just like that. And it's about 3 eighths of an inch distance if you don't have the template to follow along. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. And now we're going to start swooping the wire the other way, again so that we get a gentle arch in there. So you should have something like that now. And at this point we're going to cut another little piece which will serve as the head of our staff right there. So go ahead and pull out your 20 gauge wire again. 
We'll just set this aside for now. And this time we're going to cut a three inch piece. And I'm sorry, for those of you in metric, that's eight centimeters. There we go. And you also want to pull out your beads at this point. We're just going to need one. And I'm going to thread this on our little three inch piece we have here. And you want to leave about a half an inch of space from the end. I'm going to start bending this around the bead. What we want to do is circle this all the way around so that our metal bead is kind of encased in it. You can kind of use your chain nose pliers to push it on around there. As close as possible to the bead. And you'll notice I have this wire going around the bead going on top of this upper spike portion. We'll keep wrapping it on around. We're going to go until we get all the way around to our starting point. And then I'm going to take this tail a little bit back behind our starting wire wrap, like that. Let me just tighten it, make sure it's really close to the bead. There we go. And then we're going to take this tail so that it's going straight out. So we want it to be in a straight line with our other end. There we go. Just like that. And now this is going to serve as kind of a little spike that lays on top of our little elongated V-shape here. So it's going to go right in that space. And you want the bead, which is going to be the head of the staff portion, to just rest in between the wings like that. Okay, so we're going to trim off our excess wire right where it meets the bottom of this V portion. So I'll just use my flush cutters to do that. And then this is optional, but I do like to do it uh, is to hammer this out a little bit at this point. And I want to hammer it more at this portion and less down here so that it kind of tapers to be a thinner point at this end and thicker at this end, which is a little tricky to do. Fortunately, you don't need to worry about leaving marks from your hammer all along this length because it will be hidden. So I'm going to go ahead and hammer this out. And I don't know if you can see, but I'm angling my hammer head slightly like that so that I get the wire more splayed out at this end and less splayed out at that end. There we go. So as you can see, we've got a very subtle uh, kind of triangular shape where it's thicker up here and narrows down a little bit. And let me double check on top of our shape that it is still ending where we want it to. Okay, it gained a little bit of length from hammering. That's normal, so I'm going to snip off a little bit more from the tip. There we go, and that should be perfect. And now this is also optional. I just like to file it down a little bit since the end can be a little bit rough. This will be mostly covered up, so it doesn't really matter. But I just think it makes it a little bit more well finished. And again, as I'm filing, I'm kind of accentuating that narrowing towards the tip as well, while trying to not make it sharp. <laughs> Alright, so that's what we have at this point. I'm just going to straighten this spike out a little bit. It got a little crooked. And now we're going to bind this on top of this shape using our 28 gauge wire. So we'll be placing it like that. And I have my 28 gauge wire on a spool. I will leave a link in the description section below where you can buy these. Um, you just pop them open like this and then you can wind your wire on there. And once you close them, it kind of keeps it tensioned for you so your spool doesn't spring apart. And I find this works really well for the finer gauges of wire that I tend to use for weaving. It helps control them and you can weave right from the spool, which is very handy. Um, but if you don't have something like that, you can just go ahead and cut, I don't know, maybe a 30 inch piece of your 28 gauge wire. So basically I'm just going to get a little bit of length off of this spool here so that we have a little bit of wire to work with. And for placement on this, I've got the little spiral of wire going around the bead, going over the little top spike as we look at it from the front, and this bottom spike is behind 
down at the bottom here. Okay, so that's how we're going to position it and wrap it. So I'm just going to use my left fingers to hold everything in position here how I want it while I start wrapping with my 28 gauge wire. And you want to leave yourself about 10 or 12 inches on the tail. So I'm going to lay that over it here, pinch it with my thumb and left fingers. And I'm just going to start wrapping from the spool around the spike here. Okay. And after I get a few wraps, I'm going to smush them down flat with my chain nose pliers. And you want them to be laying right touching each other. So I'm going to continue wrapping like that. And every few wraps, I'm going to make sure that they're all next to each other and laying nice and flat. And I'm just going to keep wrapping like that so that it goes all the way down to the tip. So kind of keeping nice tension on it as you go. Again, every few wraps, just squeezing it together, making sure it's staying nice and tight. And as we get towards the last portion, I'm going to stop squeezing it this direction and squeeze it this direction instead just to again accentuate the fact that it's getting narrower and narrower towards the point. Alright, and once we're very close to the tip there, I'm going to snip off our wire. So we've got about a half inch. I'm just going to hand wind that with my tweezer nose. And you want to push the end on down so there's no sharp pointy bits. Alright, and then we're going to use this tail that we saved to go ahead and wrap the upper portion. Same deal. Just going very tightly around, placing the wraps all right next to the previous ones. And once you don't have room for any more wraps, I'm going to take it around behind and then just wrap it around the single center spike one or two times just to kind of secure it so that this wrapping wire doesn't come undone. And I'm going to take it back to the back, snip it off pretty close, and use my chain nose pliers to squeeze that little loose end nice and flat so it doesn't catch on anything. There we go. Now this little spike on top we can use to make a little ring so that we can hang this shape from a bale to make it a pendant or from an ear wire to make it earrings. I'm going to bend it forward a little bit. Switching to round nose pliers, I'm going to form a loop. Very simple. Bring it all the way around like that. And now we have a little loop on top that we can connect to something to hang this guy. Alright, so now we can go back to forming the wings. I'm going to pull out my template again. So at this point we want to kind of mark where the tips are going to be and put a little bend in there. And I like to do both sides at the same time with putting these markings in so that you can just double check that you're getting it symmetrical. There we go. And now we're going to put a very tight bend in here, same as before where we crimp it on down all the way, like that. And then we want to open it back up a little bit, as before, just like that. So we're just opening it back up ever so slightly. And we'll do the same thing on this side, putting in a nice tight crimp. There we go. And opening it back up a little bit. Alright, and now we're going to start putting in some little wavy bits following the template. So to do that I'm just going to curve this wire around 
first one way, so it's curving like that, and then we'll curve it the other way. And we're just going to repeat that, curving it first one way and then the other way, just like that. As you can see, we're getting some little waves in it. I'm going to do that about three or four times. There we go. Until we run out of space. And then we'll do the same thing on the other side. So curving it first one way. and then the other way. So this is what we have now. And we're actually going to use these same wires to then start forming the kind of heads of the snakes, if you will, and put in all these little loops. So I'm going to start with the wire coming from the left side. I'm just going to use my round nose pliers and loop this all the way around so that it forms kind of an oval shape, maybe a little sideways teardrop, that just touches the edge of the staff portion here. Okay, and we'll do the same thing with the other side, trying to get it as symmetrical as possible so that we have our two little teardrop shapes there. And again, if you have your template, you can be double checking that you're shaping it correctly. And now you can, at this point, if you like, hammer out the wings a little bit. I find that it's not necessary to add stability because of all the little bends we're putting in. It's pretty sturdy as it is. So I'm going to start shaping those little spirals. Basically, we're going to take the left hand wire and curve it on so that it goes behind. And then for this one on the right hand side, we're going to do the same thing, but bring it around to the front instead. And they should cross over each other at the same vertical height, right in the center of this staff. And now I find it helpful to turn it around to the back. And we're going to take this wire, we're basically going to alternate between having them go over and under the staff. So this one that's coming underneath, I'm going to grip with my chain nose pliers right here. I'm going to bring it back on top, like that. Okay, and then going back to the front, this one that's behind, I'm going to curve around so that it's coming over on top of the staff. So if you can see what we've done there, we've kind of spiraled them around. And that's basically what we're going to keep doing. But as we go down, we're going to make the little spirals smaller and smaller with each one until they are just touching the tip of the staff. So I want to make sure that I get this top one the size and shape that I'm happy with because this is going to determine all the future ones beneath it. I'll kind of gauge them by it just making them a little bit uh, smaller as we go. So I'm just going to spend a little while tweaking this, making sure that it is perfect. Alright, so I'm pretty happy with that. I'm going to do the next layer, so to speak. So doing the same thing, except making these little arches a little bit smaller on each successive one. So curving it from the back over top, curving it from the back over top, just like that, okay? So let's do the next one, and you can kind of push these flat as you go. So doing the next one, we're going to do it smaller yet. So we just have a few more to do, and we are almost at the point where 
they are touching the staff. There we are. So you should have something that looks like that. And then for these ends to finish them off, what we're going to do is kind of take them at an angle. And I'm going to snip them, I don't know, maybe a quarter inch out or so. There we go. Do that on both sides. I'll cut this one a little shorter. And I'm just going to take my tweezer nose pliers, grip a little distance out, and fold this on over. You can see there. I'm going to fold that all the way over so that there's not a sharp end anymore, as you can see there. And we'll do the same thing on this side, folding that all the way over, and I think I'm going to cut it a little shorter even. There we go. And folding that one all the way over. Now you could, if you are set up to do soldering at this point, just drop a little bit of solder here and here, kind of behind these spiral wires and on top of that end of our 28 gauge wire, just to kind of seal everything in place. Um, or if you don't solder and you're worried about it, you could take a high, high quality glue like Jeweler's Epoxy or something and just put a little drop right on the tip there. Um, I find that it seems to hold up just fine without that because all these wraps around, um, spiraling around, kind of seals everything in and keeps it from coming undone. As you can see, I'm pushing on these and they aren't really moving a whole lot and there's no sharp ends on the tip here. So that is our caduceus symbol. As I said, you can finish this off by adding a bail or an ear wire on top. I have done lots of tutorials on different styles of those on my channel. You can check them out if you haven't already. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial, found it easy to follow, and I hope you'll find time to make a few of these to give us gifts. Um, even if we are not in the pandemic, hopefully in the near future here, they still make great gifts for anyone who is in the medical profession, whether it be doctor, nurse, EMT, etc. I will see you guys in the next video. In the meanwhile, stay safe and healthy, and happy crafting!